So there was some absolutely game-changing news that simply just changed the entire landscape of what we thought was going to happen. And you definitely need to watch this video until the end because every single moment that there is a new update, we are constantly surprised by what is happening. So essentially, picking up from where we lost the last time, we have this tweet from Sam Altman. And this tweet was actually interpreted in a number of ways. And when I saw this tweet, I didn't immediately rush to make a video because I knew within a couple of hours there would, of course, be a result of this picture. So this picture is clearly of Sam Altman, and you can see that he is wearing a OpenAI guest pass, presumably because he's back at the OpenAI headquarters trying to discuss what Ever situation occurred and figuring out exactly what is going on. Now, the reason I didn't choose to make a video on this before was there were two interpretations from this. And with the recent information that was just released in the last 10 minutes, we now know what that information was. Some people were speculating that Sam Altman is coming back to discuss returning as CEO. That's why he's using the guest pass. And that's why he said it's the first and the last time, whilst others were saying he was just coming there to have one final discussion and then he's never going to set foot inside that building again. But now we have some breaking information from this that really changes the entire landscape. So it was only a couple of hours ago that everyone was saying that there was a push to reinstate them. But as of five minutes ago, we got some breaking news stating that Sam Altman will not return as the CEO of OpenAI. It says Sam Altman won't return as the CEO of OpenAI, despite efforts from the company's executives to bring him back. The co-founder and board of director told staff this on Sunday night. After a weekend of negotiations with the board of directors that fired him on Friday, as well as with its remaining leaders and top investors, Altman will not return to the startup he co-founded in 2015, this person said. So this is why this just absolutely changed everything because everyone was expecting Sam Altman to return as the CEO of OpenAI. We saw thousands of different tweets that were showing love hearts and giving out their appreciation for Sam Altman as the former CEO of OpenAI. But now with this recent statement, this actually changes everything that we do know. Because if Sam Altman isn't returning as the CEO, this definitely means that there's more at play here. And we're going to get into that in a moment. But what is also interesting was that we also did get some information on who the new CEO is going to be. So do you remember the interim CEO? A couple of hours ago or pretty much yesterday, we had the interim CEO, Mira Marati. Now, Mira Murati was appointed the interim CEO by the OpenAI board. And recently, a couple of hours ago, we did have this article where it said OpenAI's Murati aims to rehire Altman and Brockman after the exits. So although this is a little bit confusing, I can give you guys the rundown. Essentially, Mira was the interim CEO. She wanted Sam Altman and Greg Brockman back, but it wasn't clear as in what capacity. Also do have the information, which is just breaking news of the new CEO. So the new CEO is going to be Emmett Shear. So what we have now is we have, so it says OpenAI's board hired Emmett Shear, formerly of Twitch, as the chief executive officer, defying calls from investors to reinstate the ousted Stam Altman, according to people familiar with the matter. So from that statement alone, it's clear that the board has decided upon a new CEO. And even though that many people within the industry wanted Sam Altman back, and even though the tons of investors that we previously spoke about, the ones that were pressuring OpenAI's board to get Sam Altman and Greg Brockman back, it's clear that for whatever reason, they ignored these calls and decided to appoint Emmett Shear the new CEO. So we do need to talk a little bit about Emmett Shear because I do think that this is an interesting hire. A lot of the times when we do see new CEOs appointed, a lot of the times when we do see a new CEO appointed, we do need to know exactly who the CEO is and why they were appointed as CEO. So it says Shear has actually stepped down from the Twitch streaming site earlier this year, and he was the CEO of that website. Now, for those of you who think that, why would they hire this guy? He doesn't know much about AI, yada, yada, yada. Take a look at this clip from a recent podcast. Hopefully I can include it as long as there is no copyright, but it does show that he clearly grasps the nature 
of AGI, of ASI, and that is artificial general intelligence and artificial super intelligence to the fullest degree. And it's clear that someone with this leadership role and this previous experience is definitely going to be needed at this time. So take a look at this clip because it's fascinating to see his take on AI. Generally, I'm, a, I'm very pro-technology and I really believe the upsides usually outweigh the downsides. Everything technology can be misused. Regulating early is usually a mistake. I have a very specific concern about AI. We've built an intelligence. It's kind of amazing, actually. It may not be the smartest intelligence, but it is an intelligence. It can solve problems and make arbitrary plans. At some point, as it gets better, the kinds of problems it will be able to solve will include programming, chip design, material science, power production, all of the things you would need to design an artificial intelligence. At that point, you will be able to point the thing we've built back at itself and this will happen in, before you get that point with humans in the loop. It already is happening with humans in the loop. But that loop will get tighter and tighter and tighter and faster and faster and faster until it can fully self-improve itself, at which point it will get very fast very quickly. And that kind of intelligence is just an intrinsically very dangerous thing because intelligence is power. Human beings are the dominant form of life on this planet pretty much entirely because we are smarter than the other creatures. Now... I just laid out a chain of argument with a lot of if this, then this, if this, then this, if this, then this. I know Eliza thinks that like we're all doomed for sure. Um, I buy his doom argument. I buy the chain and the logic. Like my P doom, my probability of doom is like my bid ask spread. And that's pretty high because I have a lot of uncertainty. But I would say it's like between like five and 50. So there's a wide spread. Which I think Paul Cristiano, you know, Paul Cristiano, like who handled, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff within OpenAI, I think said 25 to 50. It seems yeah. like if you if you talk to most AI yeah. researchers, there's some it, preponderance of people that give that some percentage. Should, that should cause you to shit your pants. But it's human level extinction, I think. Yeah, yeah. But it's, no, no, it's not just human level extinction. It's such, extincting humans is bad enough. It's like potential destruction of all value in the light code. Like, like, not just for us, but for any alien species caught in the wake of the explosion. It's like a universe-destroying bomb. This is not a figure-it-out-later thing. This is like a big fucking problem. It's like someone invented a way to make, like, 10x more powerful fusion bombs out of, like, sand and bleach. That, like, anyone could do at home. Yeah. Um, it's terrifying. And I've had enough time with it now that I can laugh about it. When I first realized... It was fucking heart stopping. Well, I'm glad we spent all this time building your credibility as a normal person. Just yeah. to, to go off the rails <laughs> here. Like, here I am being the guy who's like the techno optimist. And I am like, no, no, no. The AI thing, though, th this thing, though, actually maybe maybe a problem. And I think if you're if you are rejecting it because we sound like a bunch of crazies, just notice that like some number of people who are worried about this are on. your. I'm on your team. I'm on the techno optimist team. You are not. I, I, as far as I know, your business is not in dooms, uh, doomsday scenario planning around AI. I have no financial stake in in either doomsday scenario planning around AI or the other weird like double think 40 chess thing people impute to. Uh, it is like, oh, we're actually trying to build up OpenAI and Anthropic as being and Google as being like super powerful. And it's all an ego thing about making talking about how amazingly great this stuff is so that we can like earn, raise more money. For open and, and for like, regulatory capture, or yeah, whatever. yeah, 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 and like, like. I don't own any equity in any of these things. So now that you've seen that clip from that podcast, hopefully that provides more context on what kind of CEO is going to be stepping in. But if we get back to this article, it definitely shows us how crazy this situation truly is. It says members of the OpenAI board sought a CEO to succeed Altman in a stinging rebuke to investors led by Microsoft Corp and Thrive Capital, who urged the board to step down and wanted Altman reinstated. Board members of San Francisco-based OpenAI have reached out to at least two prominent executives in the technology industry in hopes one would take the role. So it's clear that they wanted a CEO, but for some reason, whatever reason, they didn't want Sam Altman back. Now, there is something that I find to be the most interesting thing about this, and it is definitely something that isn't as widely discussed, but is now being brought up because Elon Musk made a statement recently in a tweet that has got 
people talking. And I must say, I do agree with this statement. But let's take a look at this piece of information first. So this person from the information, the article that has all the breaking news right now about this developing story, said that Ilya Sutskova has reaffirmed his earlier decision to remove Sam. So this is just truly fascinating because he said he's reaffirmed his earlier decision to remove Sam, which means he stands by that decision. Now, it's clear that the board, of course, whatever this decision was, agreed with his decision very quickly. And here's what Elon Musk said, because this is something that hasn't left my mind since I've seen this tweet. Ilya Sutskova on October the 7th said, if you value intelligence above all other human qualities, you're going to have a bad time. Elon Musk responds saying, uh-oh. Then if we go back, okay, this quote is the one that scared me because Elon Musk said, I am very worried. Ilya has a good moral compass and does not seek power. He would not take such drastic action unless he felt it was absolutely necessary. The reason this is truly concerning as a statement is because although right now many people prior to this moment were stating that Ilya Sutskova was staging a coup attempt, many people hadn't previously considered that maybe Ilya Sutskova saw something that we didn't. Right now, what's clear is that we don't have all the facts. We're only on the outside looking in, trying to get as much information as we can, and then of course, forming our perspectives on that. But the problem is, we don't have the full picture. We don't know why they made a snap decision to fire and remove Sam Altman as quickly as they did. You can see that this tweet right here, it says, question on everyone's mind right now with the Sam and stuff is basically dealt with. But the problem is, what did Ilya see? That's why this statement from Elon Musk is so riveting because he's someone who's worked with Ilya Satskova before and even recruited him to OpenAI. I'd like to be friends with Larry again. Um, he, he's, he, he got, uh, really the, 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 the breaking of the friendship was over OpenAI. Um, and specifically, um, I think the, the, the key moment was uh, recruiting Ilya Satskaya. Um, so i love Ilya. he's so brilliant Ilya's good good human uh smart good heart um and um that was that was a tough recruiting battle um it was mostly demis on one side and me on the other both trying to recruit Ilya. and Ilya went back and forth you know he was going to stay at google he was going to leave, then he was going to stay, then he was leave. And, and finally, he, he did agree to join. Oh. So now with this new perspective, we know that it isn't just black and white. Many people online are speculating that maybe they saw AGI and maybe there was a disagreement about what to do with the tech. In the previous video, we did talk about how there was a lot of secret hints and secret web pages and changes that wouldn't be surprising if they had AGI. Now, another tweet that we did get from Jimmy Apples, and if you are questioning the credibility of this source, please do check the recent videos where we talked about AGI because there are tons of videos that prove that this person is likely an open AI insider. And there are two tweets that I do quickly want to touch on. One of them is this picture here. I'm not sure of the origin, but it is really striking and definitely captivating because the caption says, I thought we had alignment. And I'm pretty sure this refers to a moment that a system, perhaps an AI system goes rogue or goes out of control. And then you say, I thought we had alignment. It could be just a meme slash wordplay on the fact that Ilya and Sam Altman aren't aligned at all. But then of course, we had another tweet here that once again says what we stated, which is what did Ilya Satskova see? We also do have this statement as well from Elon Musk that says, Elon Musk says the risk of advanced AI is so high that the public needs to know why OpenAI fired Sam Altman. I do think that one of the major questions we do have is, number one, why did they fire Sam Altman? And what did Ilya Sutskova see that made him make this decision? And it seems like while making this video, we do potentially have our answer. We got this recent article from The Information and a key part says that Sutskova, who was responsible for the company's key technical breakthroughs, brusquely declined to comment as he left OpenAI's headquarters shortly before 10 p.m. He told staff that he and the three other board members who removed Altman stand by their decision as the only path 
to defend the company's mission. He said that Altman's behavior and board interactions undermined its ability to supervise the company's development of artificial intelligence. So if we explain that, it's clear that this might actually be an issue related to safety. Although it didn't seem like it when key members of the safety team decided to announce that they were resigning yesterday alongside Altman, if Sutskova has said that removing Altman is the only decision to defend the company's mission, which is to creating a safe AGI for humanity, that must mean on some level that Altman must have done something that was far too accelerationist and maybe the board found out and they instantly fired him. The only thing is we don't know what that is. Now, of course, that statement there is just speculation. Like I said, we haven't heard Sam Altman's statement officially. And of course, Ilya Sutskova hasn't made an official statement himself and neither the company OpenAI has made an official statement regarding the true reason we've just been given a vague corporate statement. Now, what's even crazier is as I was rendering this, Ilya Sutskova has stated that Sam Altman won't return at all, and dozens of people from OpenAI have quit. The article reads, dozens of OpenAI staffers internally announced they were quitting the company Sunday night, said a person with knowledge of the situation, after the board director and chief scientist Elias Sutskova told employees that fired CEO Sam Altman will not return. The moves could hamper the company's ability to move forward after the shock firing and it will also likely change the course of the AI field and embolden a host of rivals, namely Google, that have been seeking to hire. So this is crazy, guys. This is absolutely another shocking turn of events. Many people were thinking Altman is going to come back as CEO and literally five to six hours later, the board says no. They don't really care what investors are saying, which is definitely very interesting because if they did care what investors were saying, that would mean that on some level they're financially motivated. So on one hand, we do have some Altman leaving now with a dozen of open employees. But the real question is, what will OpenAI look like once? As I was recording this, there was also some more news from Microsoft. Microsoft actually stated that Microsoft can survive without OpenAI. Microsoft can stand on its own two feet even if the multi-billion dollar relationship with troubled artificial intelligence company OpenAI collapses. That's what Satya Nadella just said. The article reads that while Microsoft has become so codependent with OpenAI, its relationship with the company behind ChatGPT can now be likened to Microsoft's Wintel partnership with Intel. And I'm pretty sure that they're trying to state this to reduce the impact that OpenAI's inevitable collapse, if it does happen, has on the stock price. He continued to state that it's not like OpenAI would have been able to build ChatGPT without our systems. And this is referring to the fact that part of a series deals thought to be valued at over $16.9 billion. And this is because OpenAI runs its ChatGPT service entirely on Azure, which is a service by Microsoft a cloud computing platform. Our, he said that our systems are powering them, we are building on top of them, and they're building on top of us, so that there's a lot of codependency in all of this. He also goes on to say that in that eventuality, it's easy enough. You always know how to stand up on your own two feet. And they also stated, well, Satya Nadella also stated, that it's not like Transformers are the last big model architecture. Then, as I was uploading the video, we have Satya Nadella literally just seconds ago tweeting, We remain committed to our partnership with OpenAI and have confidence in our product roadmap. Our ability to continue to innovate with everything we announce at Microsoft Ignite and in continuing to support our customers and partners. We look forward to getting to know Emmett Shear and OpenAI's new leadership team and working with them. And we're extremely excited to share the news that Sam Altman and Greg Brockman, together with colleagues, will be joining Microsoft to lead a new advanced AI research team. We will be looking forward to move quickly to provide them the resources needed for their success. So ladies and gentlemen, there we have it. Sam Altman, Greg Brockman, and a ton of OpenAI employees have simply left and they've joined forces with the bigger guys at Microsoft, which now leaves us with an interesting thing because if these guys are working with Microsoft, technically, are they going to be working with a chat GPT? At this moment, it's quite unclear, but they're going to be a new advanced AI research team that's going to be funded by Microsoft. It's all very confusing as to how Microsoft is going to fund this new AI research team and at the same time, continue to fund ChatGPT. But either way, it looks like Microsoft does not want to lose out on their initial investment. They're still going to be pumping money into OpenAI. 
whatever remains of that company. And it's clear that Sam Altman, Greg Brookman, and a ton of other researchers are going to be spearheading the new AI division in Microsoft. Is it going to be top secret? Is it going to be something that we're going to know about? Either way, make sure you subscribe to this channel with notifications on so you never miss an upload from this rapidly developing story.